Uh, so yeah, I'm going on vacation. Going to we're gonna we're not going to Disney World. We're going to Universal. I want to see Harry Potter World. <laughs> it's Harry Potter World at Universal. Yeah. They have they have Diagon Alley, and then they have Hogsmeade. And you can take the Hogwarts train in between the two. You you want to get really messed up right now? Just, I'm, I'm going to completely mess up your head. Okay. Harry Potter's middle child just started Hogwarts this year. I saw that. I didn't even know Harry Potter had more than one child. He's got, what, three? Three. I think he's got three. I guess. I, the endings of those books kind of pissed me off, and I'll tell you why. Because Hermione Granger is not ruling the fucking world. <laughs> she, she is so an evil. She was so destined to be like the next like fucking She evil should be sorceress. minister of fucking ma magic. She should be running fucking Hogwarts. She should be bitch in charge of the world. She should be Dead. evil. She's got a nice little law job and has Ron's babies. But, Fuck you. Let's not lie here. She should be evil. No. No, really? She should not be evil. She was, she's, she's running the fucking world. She is like, she is the next Voldemort. She should be the goddamn M in the wizard version of the MI6. She was the, she was the scariest fucking thing in all those movies. Because she's smarter than everybody. She's the next fucking Voldemort, man. But smarter than everybody, but also like with a legit heart of gold. Bitch should be running the world. I not like, no, I don't. I just uh, want to have Ron's babies. I don't know about the heart of like, gold. I like thing. Ron. Ron's a good dude. There are higher callings in life than having some good dude's babies. And ditto for Ginny Weasley, because Ginny Weasley was fucking raw power incarnate with a killer head of red hair. Only girl in the Weasley family could kick all her brother's asses up and down the block. Is this what you're going to do when you Harry go Harry Potter's baby? When you go to Harry Potter land, is this what you're going to do? Yeah, I'm going to yell at people about it. <laughs> you're going to be like Banksy, only instead of Disney, it's going to be Harry Potter. Yeah, I'm going to do like feminist Harry Potter. <laughs> In my head, when Emma Watson addressed the UN about feminism, that was like the real Hermione Granger grown up. Like that was the real ending. Like Hermione Granger getting in front of the UN and being like, y'all better respect women or else I will Avada Kedavra you. I will use that fucking time thingy they yeah. gave to a child. Go back and make sure your parents never met. That's yeah. what I'll do. She's a fucking, she's, she's a fucking evil wizard, man. She's not evil. Hermione Granger's what's up. Okay, so this week, it's not as bad as last week i mean how could it be it's last what the fuck happened last week everything that was insane so it's not as bad as last week but that's not saying a lot also luna lovegood lady gaga of the wizarding world <laughs> just throwing that out there Still with, why are you going, you're going to, you're asking for trouble. You're going to Florida. You never go full Florida. It's not like I'm just going to go move there. I'm going for like four days. Yeah, but no, no, Tara, this is like those white people who buy the haunted house. And then, you know, they're like, and there's, you know, the fucking furniture's getting rearranged when they turn around and the dog's spinning around and a little girl is talking to the TV set and they're all like, oh, I'm, it's just, it's, the house is just settling. You're like, oh, I'm just going for a few days. You're going to Florida, Tara. I'm going to come back next week. There's going to be a little meth lab set up back here. Yes! Dan's just going to be running through the shot naked and covered in peanut butter. Yes! No. No? No. no. Okay. It's, it's, you don't. <sighs> anyway. All right, let's. He'll have a beer funnel shoved up his ass. <laughs> I notice how, da I notice how Dan is the most active participant in all of this.
well, I'm going to have to run the meth lab. Have an ear funnel shoved up his ass and be naked, and that's just not safe. <laughs> Although he is the better chemist of the two of us. Each week! Ah, uh, it's the wrong thing. See, you made me play the wrong fucking thing. Because you had... Because Dan is beer funnel up his ass. Each week, Catherine... Radio Teddy, our audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. So we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? That's, this is just all, that's the rest of the night. It's that, that, I'm going to damn with a beer funnel up his ass. That's great. That's our show. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our fucking show. And that's what he'll be famous for. <sighs> Anyway, that'll be the first official Dan fan art. So we've got. OK, so you're about to be traveling. You flying or are you driving? <sighs> We're flying. So, of course, you're going to have to experience the entertainment that is the TSA. Yeah. And hey, you know why I always bring that up? The TSA doesn't bother me so much as not being on the ground. Well, you know what? This week. We have sort of a TSA type thing or an airport security thing. And I don't blame them one bit for stopping this dude. Not one fucking bit. And that's amazing. And you know why? Teen uh, charge for carrying bomb shaped alarm clock in carry on. What is a bomb shaped alarm clock? Oh, don't have a look. There's a picture right on the page. Let me show everybody. A bomb shaped fucking alarm clock. There it is. Look at that. Look at that shit. Oh, I was thinking like the comical cartoon bomb. Like no, no. What? Wow. Yeah, no. Teenagers. You can't bring that on the fucking plane, man. Teenagers been charged with mischief for packing a bomb-shaped alarm clock in his carry-on. And that, he didn't even put it in, like, his, his checked luggage. This was in the bag he was going through. So, police say that around 4.50 Saturday, the 15-year-old, that, that's 15 fucking... who was en, en route to Vancouver, was pulled aside after a screening officer and noticed the object in his luggage. The team was charged not for bringing the faux bomb, but for interfering with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property. More of the story is make sure the items you pack are allowed on a plane. I mean, said Officer uh, Constable George Tudos, what did he think was going to happen if he packed something like this? I told you about the time I got stopped because I had a, I, I was unaware I had a trick lighter in my bag, right? Yes. And I really thought I was going to get Mo because it was one of those little things that looks like a Zippo, but when you hit the button, it shocks you. Yep. But and, and I forgot that it was in my purse and the TSA guy took it out and went, oh, you can't bring this on that. And he went and I'm like, and like, I'm like, no. And then he shocked himself and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to rot in a hole and get Mo for the rest of my life. I've assaulted a TSA agent. Thank God he laughed and was like, oh, I'm going to have fun getting everybody with this. And I'm like, Thank you. Just don't put me in prison. Except, you know, there's a far cry from a lighter to, to a, yeah, to, to that. Yeah, that's, that does not belong in your that's a, bag. It's, it's, it's a fucking bomb. It's a, I just. It's, and like, oh, gosh, I need an alarm clock for your trip. Every fucking smartphone. Yes. Clock feature. There are many downloadable apps. Yes. You do not need to bring your little bomb phone on the trip. My phone has an alarm clock on my computer. There's like a Windows Store app that I got that's an alarm clock on my laptop. I've got alarm clocks coming out my butt. My tablet's got an alarm clock. I'm, I'm pretty sure my, my, my nose has an alarm clock at this point. I don't know anymore. It's the 21st century. Don't judge me. But it's it's and we don't even really need an alarm clock in this house because we have a cat that insists on being fed promptly at 7 a.m. There you go. So around 655, the starts. This is and even had you know what had you had he packed his cat, he would have gotten in less trouble. I don't know. There was that lady last week 
Well, okay, fair point. Thought she could bring her cat on the plane. That didn't work fair out so well. But, th- I mean, one of two things happened here. Either this kid is the dumbest of, he is king dumb teenager, which is saying a lot. Or, or, this little shit did this on purpose to yeah. hold up the line. I think he thought it would be hilarity. Hey, you know what'd be funny? You know what'd be funny? You know what'd be funny? What? If I go to prison forever! Hey, y'all, watch this. And while this shit's happening, you have a line of, like, 500 fucking people who have to get on their goddamn connection, and if they don't get on their connection, they miss their flight. They have to fly standby, and they might never get the fuck home. We do not have time for your shit. We don't have time for your shit at the fucking airport, kid. There should be... You know what? Going to jail should be the least of these worries. He should be scared of a lynch mob. And that's the thing. Like, you do something like this, it shouldn't be that you get charged with a crime. It should be that, like... (laughs) You get tied to a post and everybody you held up in line gets a jelly donut and then they release the ants. Yeah. That's what should happen to you. This, this, people have been murdered for less than this. You little, this is how, you know what, this is how natural selection is failing these days. Because, you know, in the olden days, some kid did some shit like this. They'd have fucking killed him. And he wouldn't have bred, and the problem would have been solved. I don't know that I'd advocate lynching people, though, as a societal norm. Have you ever missed your flight, Tara? Yes. And yet, I don't think that's a trampling offense. I got stuck in Buffalo, Tara. I think that's a Jillian Ants offense. Buffalo, Tara. Not like deadly ants, just really fucking annoying ants. Tara, Buffalo. Buffalo. I've been stuck in Buffalo many times. My sister went to school there. It's not that bad. <sighs> Moving on. There are worse fates. I mean, there's wings there. <laughs> Moving on. We're still in Canada. Okay. Canada has got a lot of things going right for it. And one of it's their health care system. But, or at least compared to ours, that's for damn sure. But, one of the things about a health care system is, is the people who are, who are actually providing the health care actually need to be health care professionals. Yeah, that, you'd like that. Receptionist, receptionist with no medical training glues boy's eye shut during procedure. He's fine. He's fine. And yet, mother of a three-year-old Quebec boy is going public after a receptionist with no medical training at his private clinic accidentally glued her son's eye shut while trying to seal a small cut on his eyelid. <clears throat> on Canada Day, uh, Vavatsikos, Vavatsikos, Julia Vavatsikos took her son Vincent to a pro- uh, Vinny, Vincenzo, Vinny. Why is it relevant that it was on Canada Day? I don't know. This is the date, I guess. Is there is, a, is like the ceremonial blinding of the child? <laughs> For Canada Day? Took him to a private medical clinic. The clinic, uh, the, the family cat had scratched Vinny's eyelid. It was a small scratch, but his mom wanted to make sure everything was okay. Dr. Jean Therian was the only doctor working and decided the cut could be sealed with medical glue. He called a colleague into the room to help. Thought because it was Canada Day that maybe the clinic oh, was short-staffed okay. uh, and that the colleague was either a nurse or medical student. The doctor was holding my son and kind of holding his eye, and then the clo- co-worker applied glue. He kind of missed and glued my son's eye shut. 
that co-worker was not a nurse or a medical student. Uh, GoPublic has confirmed that he was a clinic receptionist, a part-time employee with no medical training. Which are all things that mean you should not be allowed near a child's eyeballs for anything other than uh, looking at them. Yeah. I... But it's, it, the article... Should certainly not be near a child's eyeballs with fucking medical glue or any kind of and, glue. Well, it goes further on into the article to say that most of the doctors they talked to said, why did they even, why did the doctor even say to do that in the first place? That's not a good idea. Why are you putting medical glue near someone's eyeball? Yeah, that doesn't seem smart to begin with. Like, so, anything chemical and gluey probably shouldn't be near your eyeball. Like, so, I understand he probably didn't want to put the kid through stitches or... Yeah, but... You could probably butterfly it, though. That... Yeah, that and that's pretty thin skin and it's going to heal fast. So I've all, cut my eyelid for already. We're starting off with a bad idea. Yeah. Part first step one, the bad idea. Because medical glue is no fucking joke. They use that for like my mom got both her knees replaced and they didn't give her stitches. They glued the fucking skin back together. Well, it's it's a variant of super glue. Yeah, that shit holds. Like, nuclear holocaust, your fucking medical glue will hold. Then we go to step two, where you get the person to do something that's already a bad idea, is not a medical person. Yeah. With, you know... Especially something really delicate, like sealing a tiny cut near the eyeball. Uh, this kid's eyeball looks like it's in trouble. Like, dude, if it was, like, thumb... Why not? Give it a fucking try. Where's the harm? <laughs> no! No, Tara! That's not... We don't like say, you know, hmm, who should handle this problem? Should it be me with my eight years of medical school and my internship and my residency? No. Let's get the part-timer who sits at the my front. I've in college many a time with fucking rubber cement. Yeah, but Tara, because... you can't sue yourself. True. I guess that's a fair point. If you fuck up, you ain't, you can't, if you do something stupid to yourself, you cannot sue yourself. Just last night, Dan was super gluing something. And next thing I know, he has my nail polish remover out. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I got some crazy glue on my fingers, but acetone will eat through anything. Which makes you wonder what they did to open this poor kid's eye. Well, what they did was they took him to an optometrist who got a big magnifying glass out and they slowly and carefully pried his eyelid open. Do you know what that must have felt like? And this is a little kid. So already you have the kid. Like, have you ever had pink eye and tried to open your eye first thing in the morning and it's glued shut with fucking mucus? <sighs> Think about how hard that is. Think about how much that shit hurts. Now think about it being actual glue. You know, this kid, all right. Number one, this kid had a bad day. Number one, the cat scratches his eyeball. That's kind of sad. Kitty, why? They don't always mean it. I'm covered in fucking scratches just because Miracle walks across you and doesn't, <laughs> like, slips and catches herself. They don't always mean it. <laughs> but then he has to go to the doctor, and, and you tell kids, you can trust the doctor. He's going to make you better. And then at the end of the day, what's you started off with like a little scratch and now you've got some person with a giant fucking magnifying glass prying your eyelid. Oh, that's some clockwork orange shit going on there. Yeah. This kid is never going Although to a doctor again. The better process is pretty fucking horrible. Like I was in the ER next to a five-year-old kid getting fucking staples put in his head because he fell in the bathroom and split his head open. Ooh. Well, in the meantime, they were flipping my eyelids inside out because I had lost a contact lens in my eyeball. Like, <laughs> sometimes the getting better part, actually less fun yeah, than, actual, than just the injury. You know where the anti-vaccination people come from? Shit like this. This is where you, they start. 
This is where that how that shit begins. I thought it began with a sham doctor writing a sham report that vaccines cause autism. Yeah, but you get people thinking doctors are crazy motherfuckers and they'll believe any stupid shit about doctors. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Strife makes a good point. If this poor kid ever like this kid's never getting contact lenses. Never. No matter how bad his vision gets, he'll be like, I'll take the glasses. Fuck you. LASIK contact. No. All of the glasses, please. So our next story. God damn it. And I'm putting this out there to the audience. I we're we're ge- I, I I have decided I've had enough is enough. We're keeping a scoreboard. We I'm making a fucking scoreboard. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tasking you with something to help me out. Now that all my episodes are up on YouTube, I want you to go through, if you have the time, go through my old episodes and give me a tally of how many times the same thing happens over and fucking over. Okay? I want you to do that for me because guess what happened again, Tara? Meat down the pants. No. No. Um, gun up the vagina. God damn it. <laughs> what was sad is I was running through the list and I'm like, gosh, how many on the list am I going to have to go through? There you go. Waco, Texas. Woman had loaded gun in her vagina. Loaded. When arrested. Woman arrested at a late night traffic stop in Waco, Texas. Allegedly had a loaded handgun hidden in her vagina. Officers arrested Ashley Cecilia Castaneda, 31, and Gabriel Garcia, 30, during a traffic stop Monday night after allegedly finding 2.7 grams of methamphetamine hidden under the driver's seat and the vehicle, another 29.9 grams of meth in a purse. Officers immediately stopped and a female officer searched Castaneda, discovering she had in fact placed a loaded Smith & Wesson pistol inside her body cavity, The weapon had a round chambered and a full magazine of bullets. It had a round chambered. Sergeant Swanton said he did not know if the gun's safety was on when it was recovered. You could literally have blown a hole in your uterus. And I want to point out, normally with these stories, sometimes they'll just put like a stock photo to symbolize gun. No, that's the actual gun. That's the gun they pulled out of her hooju. The exact gun. And I feel- you pulled over with contraband and you have to hide it from the cops. And you're trying to choose between the things you should shove up your vagina, between the bags of meth and the gun. Really, you should shove neither of those things up your vagina. But if you have to choose, go with the fucking meth. You know why? <laughs> because it doesn't- Involve any explosive concussive force that can blow a hole through your entire person. <laughs> what is the, it's all maybe the bag will break and you'll wind up with super cat powers like Scarlett Johansson in that movie. But yeah, you're not going to end up with superpowers. You're not. I mean, you'll think you have superpowers. You'll probably. think you do. And then you'll die. What if that's what really happened in that movie? What if that was all one giant hallucination and none of that really happened? It's a better movie than what we actually got. Like, no gun up the vagina. I think Ninja I just... No one with a fucking round chamber because I just learned what that means really recently and that's a terrible idea. Yes. I don't know much about guns, but... Ninja Jedi in the channel just... I think that's the first time anyone's ever, ever said that one. New meaning to thunder thighs. <sighs> I always wonder which way they have them pointed. I know! Because one way, it's like a grindhouse flick. You know, yeah. you're fighting zombies with bullets I mean, one way, out of your genitals. One way, anatomy, could be amazing. Oh, and, the, and the other way... You could have a career in, like, action porn. Yeah. Action. <laughs> Tara, I think you just invented a genre. I think you just fucking invented a what's genre. A good, what's a good porn title for like, a, like a the man with the golden gun title? Like 
the girl with the golden shower gun. Oh, no, it's stop. It's a bit no, wordy. Don't. <sighs> I mean, Mike says action porn exists. He's like, here, let me hand you some links. Mike, stop. My favorite. Mike, stop. Mike, fuck's sake, stop. Why do you have, why do you have legs? Why do yeah, you know I these things? I said that yet, I'm just waiting for it. Cause that's Mike and he's helpful. Uh, I, I imagine we'll both get some DVDs in a week. So yeah, I, I want, I want people to go back through, go back, send it to requests at radiodeadair.com. Go back through the episodes. They're all on YouTube now and count how many times this shit's happened. Cause it's official. We need a scoreboard. Are you giving them homework? I'm giving them homework. We need a fucking scoreboard. Is this going to be on a final? <sighs> I would like to know how many instances. What are, what are the ones we want them to look for? We want them to look for gun in the vagina. Yeah. Meat, meat down the pants. Or anything stolen shit. Put it in the pants. Try to get out. No, I think specifically meat stuffs. Because um, we get a lot of that and it's weirdly specific. Yeah. Stolen ambulances. Stolen ambulances. Stolen ambulances. Bath salts. Uh, bath salts. Florida. Well, no, they they yeah, that, days. they'd be different days. Yeah. Do we go with naked? No, nah, it's kind of a standard. That's 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 too fucking common. Cars and pizza. Cars and pizza. Pizza and cars. Yes, the inevitable, the weird siren song like pull pizza has over all pooping. Of pooping. Pooping in general. Showing up at someone's house and making, just, you know, making food. Yeah, the, like, the break-in brunch thing. I'm just going to break in and make myself a meal and watch your TV. <sighs> anyway. Well, this is actually a new one tonight. I Someone did something novel for this show. That's not a good thing. That's never a good thing. No, not on this show, it's not. Man threw lit firecrackers into crowd gathered for Harrisburg fireworks. 68-year-old man was arrested at the Harrisburg fireworks display after officers say he threw lit firecrackers into crowds of people. David Sutton Fischel was arrested Sunday and charged with simple assault, recklessly endangering another person in connection with the alleged incident. Officers were on patrol when multiple people told police they witnessed the borough man lighting and throwing the fireworks. What the fuck? Asshole. It oh, you guys want to see some fireworks? Close up. No. Nobody was hurt, thank God. That's not, that's not a show you want in 3D. This is, this... Do you really want to see a, a human stampede? Was that what you were going for? A burning human stampede? Look at all the shit that has God, been happening. Think about that. Like, what's what's the only way you could make a zombie movie more terrifying? Set the zombies on fire? Make all the zombies be on fire. I, it, you, with all the shit that has been going on lately, and by lately, I mean the past decade, do you really want to throw explosives into a, into a crowd of people and watch what happens? Even if the last decade had not happened, I would not think that's a good idea because people are weirdly flammable and vulnerable to concussive force. And fireworks, to, everyone's acting like, oh, it's just a little firework. No, that shit is no joke. That shit will still blow off your finger. They're fucking explosive. Take your goddamn ear off, your eyeball. I mean, Mike. It'll take things you will miss. You are throwing grenades at people, you shithead. Like, yeah, yeah, they're just little fireworks. When they land on your dick, Tell me they're just little fireworks. I don't want my dick to explode, Tara. Exactly. There's no such thing as just a little tiny explosive when it's on your person. 
<laughs> Size does matter. It does matter. But not in this case. No amount of explosive is little enough to be on your person. No. In my opinion. I Man, when I was a kid, we even had those little, uh, do you have those, those fire? The little called? bang snaps? Yeah. That e were just like matchstick stuff. Even those were bullshit. Even that shit would hurt. Cause it's, <laughs> yeah, those would sting. And, the, and they're like, and even the box encouraged you, a little cartoon of little kids throwing them at each other. We were assholes. Yeah. Well, we also had candy cigarettes that looked like they had real smoke. And yeah. We did a lot of really dumb shit. We still do a lot of really like, dumb shit. The, the entire childhood of people our age would be enough to get parents arrested now. So our next one comes to us from Russia. And, you know, kids will be kids. You cannot leave them alone because if you turn your back for five minutes, they have... I don't know. They've shaved the cat. They've they've somehow managed to flush an entire laptop computer down the toilet. Or. In this case. They've dug an escape tunnel out of kindergarten and went to buy a sports car. What? Two five-year-old Russian boys used spades to dig their way out of kindergarten and set off on a mission to buy a Jaguar sports car. Two boys disappeared as a group took part in a, a supervised walk in the grounds of the kindergarten. Um, <clears throat> after reaching freedom, the boys walked two kilometers to a, car to, to a car showroom selling luxury cars. A female driver noticed the unaccompanied children and asked them what they were doing. They told her they had come from their kindergarten to buy a Jaguar, but did not have any money. What the fuck kindergarten was this? The boys had been preparing their escape for several days, digging a hole under the fence using spades for the... This is some Hogan's hero shit. Why did they have to escape... Kindergarten. <laughs> Is this kindergarten run by the fucking Spetsnaz? Like, <laughs> was this the Shawshank kindergarten? Because, <laughs> I mean, it was a long time ago and admittedly not in Russia, but when I was in kindergarten, it was for like two hours a day. These kids. These fucking kids. And it was not fenced in. Uh, you know, I, I... And they certainly didn't give you spades. Where did these kids get fucking spades? Apparently they, they were got it from the sandbox. They were using, like, plastic sandbox oh shovels. <laughs> these guys, these kids are my hero. Look at this is, you know what? If you will it, dude, it is no dream. Holy shit. What? remarkable initiative and action <laughs> for a five-year-old like think about when you were five you had a new f awesome idea every 10 minutes yep did you have the follow through to, to see any of those plans through for fucking days yep i mean these kids like you you were gonna dig to china every kid decided they were gonna dig a hole to china yep. right i got you bored for about 10 minutes and you and got bored like, i'm bored squirrel <laughs> <laughs> These kids took five years old. Five. five. They had just, they were not, they were a year away from not pooping their pants. Dan or says this is away. the kindergarten that Natasha Romanov went to. <laughs> They're like two, three years, two, three years ago, they were pooping their pants. Now they've got this elaborate escape tunnel shit. Because they want themselves a sports car. Yeah. Are these Vladimir Putin's kids? I don't know. Maybe. Daddy said if we escape kindergarten camp, you must give us car. <laughs> I'm proud of them. I'm, pr I'm proud of these kids. What movies are you letting these kids watch at home? <laughs> I don't know, but I am proud of them. 
Phineas and Ferb got fucking weird. I these kids has always been weird. In in 20, 30 years, these kids are going to take over Russia. 20 or 30. Next year, these kids are going to take over Russia. Fair point. Fair point. All right. So our final one tonight, San Bernardino, California. We got video. That's where we're kind of starting with this one because I I have I have no no better opening, no better no, no let me uh, I'll get you the link. I'll, I'll just This is without a doubt ladies and gentlemen, this is the weirdest DUI you will ever 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 experience. Let's 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 go that's a bold claim on this show. That is a bold claim. And you're this is the weirdest DUI you will experience. Let's let's do this. Here we go. All right. So here's this car driving along. This person behind it. They have their dash cam on. And whoa, the car stops. And there she goes. And uh, the car just kind of keeps going keeps going and here it comes wait for it bang and there it's off in the she just left go she just <laughs> jesus take the wheel you're doing it way wrong that's not what that means way wrong He's not literally going to drive you home. No one was hurt, thankfully. Even though that fucking car hit two others like damn, but no one was hurt. San Bernardino woman abruptly stopped her car along a major street, abandoned the vehicle, and allowed it to careen into opposing traffic. And she's just walking along like doop 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 doo doo Making my way downtown. Walk if I... Oh, wait, I'm not walking. Hop out of the car. Making my way downtown. <laughs> walk if I... <laughs> today. I should just walk. You should never drive drunk. No. But if you realize you're driving drunk. Put the car in park first. Stop the car. Pull off the road. Before you park, get out. And then walk home. Stop the fucking car. This is like you think your car is Bumblebee. <laughs> your car's not Bumblebee. But your car is not, in fact, Bumblebee. It's not like you could be your like. Your car is also not Kit. You don't get. It's not like suddenly if you're driving drunk and you suddenly realize it and you stop, it's not like you get a mulligan. It's not like you get a pass on that shit. It's like, oh, wait, I wasn't. I'm not. But I, I'm not driving anymore. You can't bust me. I'm fine. A drunk person is definitely not driving that car. And I want to see it again because look at the nonchalant way. I know. She's just like. It's not like she bails out and panics. Okay. No. It's here. Here here we're coming to it. It's boom. Look at it. She just like hops out and like, there we go. Getting on with my life. Everything's fine. I'm just casual as you please. Her car. Here it, oh, oh, here it comes. Come bang, just broadsides a dude. Can you imagine being on the road watching this? Like. Well, I don't have to, Tara. We've got video. No, but can you imagine being in one of the cars near it and seeing this? Oh, I'd have shit person? myself. I'd have shit myself. Like, what just happened? Like, how do you even react to that? <laughs> it's, I, it's like. You, there's no sense to be made. It's like, oh, things are a cartoon now. I am, I see. Is oh, that good. I can hit myself in the head with this giant mallet and be just fine. We've changed the rules. Life is Looney Tunes. Okay. There's 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 a glitch in the matrix. Maybe she thought it was like Grand Theft Auto, and you can just hop out of a car and it'll just disappear. But once you leave that car, it just disappears, and you move on to the next one. <laughs> and then someone mods it so a whale falls out of the sky. Yeah. Yeah, that of course. That's exactly how that worked. Lady. 
no. Do not do this thing. Oh, and you want to know the crazy shit, even though they have this on video, they have this on video. This is the fucking California. Lacey was released from custody early su Saturday due to insufficient evidence to support a criminal complaint, according to Los Angeles County booking records. Insufficient evidence? According to California, what you all just saw on video was not a crime. If you live in California, have fun. I don't think Mike should know that. <laughs> Mike should not fucking know. That, that's, apparently it is. They decide. That's Mike's just going to start stealing cars driving them, and then walking away from them and giggling. <laughs> Not a crime! I'm fine! That's gonna be his new job. What I just did! Not a fucking crime! See you later! That's... Just... So I don't know who's the bigger asshole, her. Here, her or, or California. <laughs> I guess, what crime do you charge her with? Reckless endangerment. Well, all right, yeah. Because he can't charge her with reckless driving. <laughs> She's not driving. Well, still, you don't just hop out your car. It's not. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe they were sitting there like, we got to fucking charge her with something. But, but what? That's this, a... like. No one sits down when writing laws and goes, we have to make it specifically illegal to abandon your car while it's moving and let it roll away. Well, so yeah, apparently if, if you live in California, be afraid. That's the first thing we learned this week because... Yeah. We've learned that Americans, when, when it comes to our kids... We, we're amazed that they can count to like 20. In Russia, they're fucking, they're, they're, they're fucking tunneling to freedom. Yeah, we, we you know. We're, we're falling behind. That we're behind the rest of the world mm. in education. But, you know, the last people to tunnel out of a prison here were like 40 something and they didn't make it. Yeah, so America, we've got some catching well, up to out, do. But one of them died and one of them got brought right back. America, we've got some catching up to do. Yeah. We've learned that no amount of explosive is a good amount of explosive to have on your body. No. At all. It's never a good... There is no such thing as, as a fun body explosion. Well, there is. But it doesn't involve actual incendiary Expl devices. See, that's not, that's not an explosion, no. An explosion is a fucking explosion. Not in the literal sense. Yes. No, Dan and Mike, you may not go to L.A. and abandon cars together. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a crime, apparently. You may not shit on the golf course next door. <laughs> build Ultron in the garage. You may not abandon cars with Mike in L.A. Do we need a list of things Dan's not allowed to do? We're going to have to post a list of rules in the kitchen. Speaking of lists, we've learned. Speaking of lists, we've learned we need a scoreboard. We fucking need a scoreboard. We do. We need to start keeping a tally. <laughs> we've learned if you are not trained medical professional, put no, the glue down. No, no glue in children for you. Don't don't put the glue on the kids and just step away from no. Finally tonight. My brother-in-law mm. is a medical professional. And when I had the spider bite, he wanted to like do the surgery on my leg with a steak knife at home. And I was like, no, fuck you. I'm going to the ER. You know why? They have local anesthetic there. No, it's and fine. Like, it's a fucking dinner knife. Did he, I, I swear, did he say I, it's clean? It's fine. It's clean. Did he say that? He was that? like, yeah, we'll sterilize. It'll be fine. And I'm like, no. That's not the concern. No. Not going to happen. Finally, this week we've learned if you need an alarm, you have your phone. Yeah. If you need an alarm clock that bad, 
make sure it doesn't look like a fucking bomb! Yeah. The TSA doesn't fuck around with that stuff. They're not playing. They they will send you someplace that will not be funny. Yeah. They're not going to appreciate the humor. I mean, they might, because that guy thought my lighter was really funny. But chances are. Yeah, because they, they're a little... For some weird reason, they're a little jumpy about bombs at the airport. Go it's figure! Crazy. Like, I can't imagine why. I know. But yeah, they're a little per particular about that sort of thing. Uh... I'm going to Florida. I think Dan and I will take a day out of our vacation and just hang out, just like drive to Walmart's clotheslining people. Maybe I can film something in action. Maybe I can catch somebody shoving meat down their pants and walk up and ask them why. It'll be like a real investigative reporting thing. It's because it's Florida! Like, excuse me, sir, I notice you're naked on the side of the highway cooking meth on a folding table. Can you tell me how you came to this decision? And where did you get the snake? <laughs>